Thank you for joining us for this sermon podcast from the Congregational Church of Needham, United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you're invited and welcome. Disciples saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were unt- If you enjoy this podcast and would like to learn more about our open and affirming ministry at the Congregational Church of Needham, simply head over to our website, www.needhamucc.org. Thank you. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, If these were silent, the stones would shout out. Hosanna! 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 If it's Hosanna, then it must be Palm Sunday, and if it's Palm Sunday, then it must be Hosanna. Hosanna is just one of those words, one of those Bible words, so intimately associated with one particular moment in the gospel story and one particular moment in our life together as the church. Think how odd it would be if we got here on Ash Wednesday and somebody ran up with a palm branch and said, Hosanna! Or at Christmas time as Mary and Joseph were making their way on a very different donkey. Hosanna! Palm Sunday is Hosanna Day. It's the day when we remember Jesus' entry, sometimes called his triumphal entry, into Jerusalem, the capital city of the Jewish people and home to their holiest of holies, the temple of God. And we're told that on that day, the crowds came out to see him, came out to line the roads, that they took off their cloaks and laid them on the road before him, that they even tore branches from the trees to wave as Jesus of Nazareth rode by, and that they cried aloud, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, blessed is the son of David, come to rule once more, Hosanna in the highest. And so year after year, we do the same, arming our children and ourselves with palm branches to help us reenact and remember this procession that leads to Jesus's last week on earth, his final confrontation with the powers that be secular and religious, to his last supper with his disciples, and to his arrest, trial, execution, and resurrection, the holiest of holy weeks in our church calendar is great. But as we begin this familiar journey again, I want to ask, what does it mean? Hosanna. I mean, what does Hosanna mean? Because no one ever told me that growing up. There was no Sunday school lesson focused on what Hosanna meant, merely this chance to cry it aloud and to wave our palm branches and to hopefully not hit our sisters and brothers too much. They just put the palm in my hand and pointed me down the aisle with all the other kids while the music 
began to play. Hosanna! Well, turns out, Hosanna isn't just Hebrew for hooray. Hosanna is not a synonym for hallelujah. Hosanna is its own thing. It has its own particular meaning, which is probably why the authoring communities of the Gospels, according to Matthew and Mark and John, all chose to leave the word Hosanna untranslated in their Gospel narratives. Hosanna in the Greek, approximating the sound of the Hebrew, Hoshiano, which meant something much closer to help us. Help us. Not hooray. That's what those crowds are shouting as Jesus rides by. Help us, Lord. Save us, son of David. Hear our pleas for deliverance all the way up in your highest heaven, O God. What a difference a word can make. In their book, The Last Week, about this last week of Jesus' life, biblical scholars Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan helped to flesh out that first Palm Sunday scene in stunning historical detail in a way that I never heard in Sunday school. Because you see, Jesus' triumphal entry wasn't the only parade on the Jerusalem city calendar that day. While Jesus of Nazareth, prophet of the poor, was riding into the city from the east, making his way down from the Mount of Olives on his ridiculous little donkey to the hosannas of the peasant crowd, his eminence Pontius Pilate, Roman governor of the occupied Judea, was riding at the head of a column of crack troops entering Jerusalem from the west. All the power and glory of the empire bristling on display, armed to the teeth, prepared to keep the uneasy peace during the annual Passover observances when passions ran high by any means necessary. Because things were bad in Jerusalem and in Judea. They were bad for the 99.999% at the base of the pyramid scheme. And that wasn't because the system, the political and economic and religious system that hummed around the hub of Jerusalem, it's not because the system was broken. Rather, that system was doing exactly what it was designed to do and do with ruthless efficiency. The elites of that day used perfectly legal loopholes in the law to seize land from the peasants and then rent it back to them, and then take the food and goods they produced on that land and sell it back to them at a hefty profit. The powers that be even taxed their relationship with God as that relationship was mediated through the sacrificial system of the temple. Quite simply, the the domination system designed by the rich and powerful enabled them to grind the bones of the poor and powerless to make their bread and butter and business, and business was good. These two processions, Pilate's and Jesus's, offered starkly differing visions of two opposing systems, these two kingdoms, the kingdom of Caesar, of the elites, of domination and violence and economic exploitation of the many by the few, and the kingdom of compassion, justice, and peace, true peace, not just the Pax Romana, an abundant life for all people, the kingdom of God. So the crowds lined the roadsides to catch a glimpse of Jesus. Not astride a mighty war horse or riding in a fancy chariot, but almost comically dragging his heels in the dust, precariously balanced on a donkey in order to make an ass of Pilate. That first Palm Sunday wasn't so much the grand, happy procession the church remembers now, some 2,000 years later, but rather a kind of living political cartoon, a satire 
carefully planned by Jesus to call out the oppression of the powers and principalities. The crowds came to cheer his vision of a new way, of a new day, of a world turned upside down where the last would indeed be first for once, forever. And yes, doubtless, some simply got swept up in the fervor, letting their free-flowing anxieties feed the frenzy high on hope. And can you blame them? So they all cried out with one voice, Hosanna! Hosanna! Save us! Son of David, Son of God, finally, God hears our hosannas all the way up in heaven. Dear God, Hosanna! As Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, a riot is the language of the unheard, and these are the unheard who gather along the roadside. The oppressed, the lowest, and the least Hosanna is the language of of those people and of those who recognize their utter dependence on God and those persons of privilege who choose to step down and step aside and side with them in solidarity for God's way and God's reign. Now, of course, that first Palm Sunday was, as I said, almost 2,000 years ago, but we all know that the more things change, the more they stay the same. The system, that very same system, keeps grinding away today. The faces and places, the clothes and customs have changed, but the suffering is the same, and the suffering is real. The world that needed the revolutionary word of love that Jesus brought back then still needs it today. They need to know, we need to believe and hope And trust that Jesus is drawing near to us in our need. That the kingdom of God is coming to overturn the kingdom of domination and exploitation and violence. That the spirit is finally showing up to shake stuff up for good. So rather than just going through the motions one more year, mouthing the words, making a happy hallmark hallelujah out of a heartfelt hosanna once again. I wonder if this year we're ready to add our voices to those of the rowdy crowd. Those who've been liberated by the presence of the living God just long enough to cry Hosanna. To cry their hopes aloud as the King of Glory goes meekly by. I wonder, which parade would we be more likely to attend? What do we hope for? What do we hope for ourselves and for our world today on this, our present Palm Sunday? What do you hope for? What do you have the foolish courage to hope for in the midst of this unsteady and confusing and hurting world? By the way, this is a real question. This is not one of those rhetorical sermon questions we're usually used to. We're going to take a moment right now to lift up our own hosannas and to listen to one another's. I know that may make us uncomfortable. Good. So I ask again, what are your hosannas? What are your prayers? Lift them up out loud. And after each one, we'll answer together, Hosanna in the highest. What is your Hosanna today? That we would respect one another. Hosanna in the highest. That everyone should have enough food and none go hungry. Hosanna in the highest. That there be less hatred in the world and more love. Hosanna in the highest. Empathy and compassion. Hosanna in the highest. That we would know God's will for the world and for us. Hosanna 
in the highest. Peace in our families. Peace in all of our homes. Oh God, Hosanna in the highest. To keep love in our hearts, Hosanna in the highest. An end to patriarchal domination, even that domination by which I prosper and am privileged. Hosanna in the highest. That we would meet suffering with hope. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our hosannas, hear our prayers, both the prayers that we manage to bring to our lips, the prayers that we dare not give voice to, the prayers that scare us to pray, the prayers that are impolitic and uncomfortable, but we know match your matchless will and love. Give us the courage and commitment to work with you to bring them to pass, not just for us, but for all your people, in all your power, and in all your holy names, we pray. Amen.